Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Science Thursday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about gas turbine power plants. In the last episode, we talked about uh, diesel power plants. So today we're gonna continue with gas power plants. So what the heck it is? Well, in simplest term, it's a way to burn hydrocarbon in, and turn it into electricity. It's a bit different than diesel power plant because again, the moment you say diesel, you specify which fuel you are using. Here, it's not so. Some places uh, directly burn uh, fuel oil into this. Some places use gas into it. Some places in, in gas also, there is multiple options. Some places will use methane, other places will use butane, propane or things of that nature. So that is why like you can generalize it a bit where it's like, okay, it's a hydrocarbon system. and uh, as a prime mover which is the thing that drives the generator it is using jet engine a flat out normal jet engine again modified for this kind of application but you get the idea like the jet engine is the core and it does not require steam as a primary method you can add steam to it i will explain why but again if let's say you are in a water standard place like uh, dubai or things of that nature this sort of power plant makes a lot of sense simply because you burn a lot and you get a lot of electricity and you don't have to you know like you know have a river uh, diverted so it can you know operate because coal power this is one thing less known about coal power plants they drink water like there is no tomorrow so why it is like uh, why we are using something that is used for aircraft and we are using it here well you have to understand that natural gas over the time has become much bigger player because even if there is someone who's like uh, man-made human uh, climate changes you know, uh, hoax or things of that nature even those people are absolutely certain about pollution pollution equal no good flat out there is no discussion about that so though in those sort of scenario where people are like hey i don't care about the carbon dioxide that is released because of uh, let's say coal but i do care about the sulfur that is released and i do care about the smell and the people were becoming sick around those sort of scenario and heck there was a places where people used to uh, you know refine oil the whole area used to classify it as cancer alley because almost every tom dick and every used to get cancer out of them so people may have uh, like you know differing opinion about uh, climate change every tom dick and harry agrees with pollution that hey that shall not have pollution so in those sort of scenario gas is becoming a very good alternate uh, like delhi uh, india's capital took a very big step uh, quite years back and it has paid off is that slowly they are uh, switching all their primary uh, public transport into something uh, gas based basically cng based compressed natural gas which is mostly methane and the uh, benefit of that has been tangible like a pollution before that pollution after that is a drastically different so natural gas is becoming a big player so people want to use that expanding market into power generation also on top of that, in recent years, because uh, basically uh, people want to reduce cost and solar power plant is now almost at the same level as coal power plant in terms of cost per megawatt. So people are using solar that is just like, hey, it's simpler, it's cost effective. Well, the moment something becomes cost, cost effective, you don't have to, uh, you know, justify it. It's like, hey, it makes profit the end so uh, there are more solar power plant put into the national grid problem of that is that now uh, national grid is no longer stable at is used to be like uh, older uh, architecture which was used in like you know 1980s to 1990s was very simple it's like you have electricity the peak demand will be in there night will be uh, you know low demand it was normal like the wave was very normal however now because so many things are put into the grid like be it wind power plant and other scenarios those are making grids far more dynamic basically you have to manage it now so in those sort of scenario people want something that is a bit more flexible than basically nuclear power plant and coal power plant because these puppy are what we call base load basically they cannot change it's like they are making 2000 megawatt let's say for instance that's it they can't do anything up or down again little bit here little bit there but not too much so and when you see people saying you know powering down in a nuclear reactor basically they're shutting down a reactor they may not have one reactor only they may have four reactors working in parallel so they will be like yeah let's turn off one it is that hard to control power output for these puppies so people want something more flexible on top of that efficiency is key how do you reduce pollution how do you reduce your emissions simplest way make your thing more efficient there is no two way around it the more efficient you get and not to mention it directly affects your profit if you have to buy one ton and let's say you got uh, one megawatt out of that okay that's profitable you spent one ton and you got two megawatts of power now you are double profit so people want that like it's not a corporate greed or things like that it's just efficiency people want efficient so that is why gas turbine is becoming uh, so more important so let's understand how the heck it works it's surprisingly simple so uh, the core design of that is turbo jet based, not turbo fan based turbo fans are used for your passenger jet and turbo jet is generally used for fighter jets because turbo jets are a bit more fish uh, but they are a bit uh, less efficient so first you do, uh, first thing you do you 
have a air intake manifold now this manifold has to do a very uh, difficult task because the air input must be clean uh, think of it this way there are jet engines that are put into tanks abraham tank is running on jet engine the moment they send it into iraq most of the jet engines started to wear out the blades here the compressor blades start to wear out so they had to keep replacing it very frequently like uh, earlier like in places which are cold and all or like is not sandstorm basically these turbines were working for let's say hours and hours and hours and hours now they are only working like you know few hours before like needing maintenance so you must have an air intake manifold that can take care of that because this plant this puppy will keep working 24 into 7 so it is it needs clean air so it's no laughing matter then you take the air then you send it through this stack which is a air compressor what kind of air compressor which we classify as axial air compressor so it's like this basically your thumb would be uh, direction of your axle compressor rotation would be like this and the air flow would be directly like that is why it's called axial so what is happening is like you can see the gap of air is bringing smaller and smaller smaller and smaller and what will happen if you just have a cone like here again air will not be forced to that so that's why you have turbine blades you are compressing air so like first stage will be like you know let's say you take normal air pressure it goes to like you know 10 psi to 100 psi then you to 200 psi then to 500 psi you keep increasing it depending on design limitation then you put fuel into it now the fuel here is very difficult it's not something because the air pressure is so damn high if you just put fuel there it will just throw out it will not burn so there is a basically combustion chamber specifically designed so it can withstand hurricane speed winds and that high pressure high temperature because again you are compressing air so much so it's already hot so they have to mix fuel into it make sure there is a clean burn into this and then they have the exhaust now this exhaust is hot and it has a lot of physical energy is in like a lot of uh, thrust it has so that thrust is converted into rotational energy using the turbine now this is your bread and butter so till this point you you are not getting anything out of it the moment your exhaust basically the hot fast moving gas hits the turbine it rotates the turbine the turbine spins the compressor so it's a self-fulfilling system now this turbine is spinning let's say this generating let's say 1000 horsepower this compressor will only consume 200 horsepower so this turbine basically you can connect it to anything basically this is now connected to uh, your generator and you can see the same design used in helicopters that's why helicopters nowadays are running on jet engines basically you take the same thing you have a shaft going into main rotor so that's what happening here now uh, that's all there is to it. You take the air, you compress the heck out of it, you add fuel properly, you burn it, the exhaust now have physical motion, that physical motion is turned into rotational motion using turbine, tada. That's it, it's very simple, surprisingly so. So that's how you can get a lot of electricity out of it. But somebody said, the exhaust at this point is loud as hell and is hot as hell. So somebody's like, that means there is inherently a lot of energy into this. Why not we extract energy out of that place? So that created the birth of combined cycle system. Now, if you are in European country, specifically the part of country that is always cold as hell. So in those sort of scenarios, people are like, hey, just have that go through a heat exchanger where you are heat, uh, the building uh, heating oils and all that and then circulate into the town. That's it. They are just uh, using a centralized heating system. Benefit, uh, this way carrying heat directly into the places uh, where you need the heat it's very efficient lot of efficiency now what about other places let's say you are in desert and you don't need to like you know heat places up so let's say in those scenarios uh, electricity is more desirable so somebody created a steam generator that works on the exhaust of jet engine because jet engine exhausts are hot so you create a uh, uh, basically quote unquote boiler that is specifically tuned for that now you have take that boiler you uh, again you get the high pressure steam you put it into a steam turbine then that steam turbine also turns the generator that way you get more more electricity out now why the hell go through all this jazz here's the deal this puppy has achieved upwards of 60 percent efficiency that is mind-bogglingly good to give you a context of that your car engine 20 percent done like you're pushing it really 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 hard at best case scenario in a road efficiency is like 30 percent 40 some toyota designs are pushing that but you get the point like not that efficient uh talk about a steam power plant basically where you have coal fired 30 to 40 pushing it a really really high tech uh, gas burning power plant really high tech pushing it to 50 this puppy is 60 and it is higher than 60 like it has achieved that now what does that mean that means double profit you buy this expensive thing it makes you much more profit per ton of fuel that you are burning and it's also reducing noise pollution simply because you are taking the energy out of the exhaust so it's uh, reducing noise pollution reducing emission because you are simply not burning enough so at this point 
this is a money making thing like uh, general electric turbines are really printing money at this point in time that is why people are uh, switching into more into combined side especially where places are cold they don't even have to have uh, the expensive because this is expensive unit you are putting another quote and quote steam turn right here just have a oil heat exchanger and ta da heating for the whole town so it is quite successful nowadays so what we can expect in the future well in simplest way put it this way you have to understand the context of power level that we are talking about now in diesel power plants uh, they generally reach in like you know 10 to 20 megawatts to 100 megawatts. they are generally below that barely any power plant has reached 120 this puppy a single turbine can reach as high as 500 megawatt right now that's a lot of ohm and that's without the combined cycle so combined cycle will add extra 20 to 30 percent more power so you have to understand that that is a big game and as of now when i'm making this video uh 60 percent of uss electricity is directly coming off natural gas and many other countries are also moving into natural gas why simply because uh, first more, much more profitable because even if people don't care about uh, greenhouse emission they care about pollution this is less polluting so flat out there is no context here it's like people are jumping into this now uh, because of the turbine inherent nature the power to weight ratio of turbines are got tier that's why they are, they are used in fighter jets and all that uh, it's very compact for the power output so when i say compact i don't mean like oh you can carry it in your hand like this sort of turbines are 200 ton plus so it's not something that you can like yolo around it's not even as easy as like you know shipping it using container ships it will not even fit into that so it's ludicrously difficult but more and more designs are coming for lower power output which is much more compact because the moment they reach a point where they can put it into a container ship it opens a whole different world basically there are many coal power uh, basically uh, gas power plants that are using normal steam cycle which is at best case scenario 30 to 40 percent efficient some pushing it to 50 like experimental reactors putting to 50 if they can directly replace that with this much more efficiency so again much more profit lower pollution and all that jazz so we will want to make it compact for that reason and they, uh, right now as of the design it's very modular because think of this way let's say you opened a town uh, a town established a big factory happened and things are working on this so you will be like okay uh, the turbine is like well, making 100 watts of power whatever that is and then you're like okay uh, now the town is growing you add another one you uh, town is growing more you add a bigger one so you have a lot of uh, what we call flexibility So this was my presentation on basically uh, turbine power plants. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me your extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.